Hey guys, I want to explain <clears throat> your uh, short assignment 4.2. I'm calling it officially the Gatsby Ambition Project, and I wanted to kind of explain it to you and give you an example because I have a feeling I might get some questions about it. So um, we don't typically do projects that are quite like this. Um, it has been more writing intensive, but just for the sake of interacting and engagement and kind of trying something different, um, your task is going to be, it's going to help me understand how well you understand The Great Gatsby um, based upon the application that you're able to make and the conclusions that you draw from it. So your task is to consider a moment in your life where you had an ambition that drove you towards success and that when you finally attained that success, you realized that the pursuit was meaningless. Maybe it was disappointing or it led to death in some way of a goal, a purpose, a partial identity, etc. So... I just want you to think about like, okay, what was it that Gatsby was ambitious toward? He was ambitious toward a couple of things. One, he was ambitious toward money and kind of at the root of that ambition was his ambition toward achieving a relationship with Daisy. So he had those various ambitions along the way. There were smaller ambitions. So for instance, to, um, secure like the fame and the notoriety and to, um, flaunt his wealth and to get people to come and it said at one point in the book that people were attracted to him like moths to a flame um so what were the different ambitions that he had along the way and how did he sort of sell out for those ambitions what promoted him or drove him to accomplish those and then once he did accomplish them once he did get people to his parties once he did have daisy's attention once he did have his extravagant wealth um, what was his degree of satisfaction with regard to those? And then you can kind of think about your own life and honestly take this to any scale that you want to. I hesitate to give you ideas because I want you to be creative, but I think at the same time that some of you will struggle. So if you, I, I'm thinking a lot of you might think about like um, an athletic goal that you had at one point in your life, that everything you did was motivated toward that goal. And then you recognize like, okay, now I'm 17 or 18. This is, I'm not where I thought I was going to be. And pursuing that goal further is not going to lead to what I thought it would. Um, it might also be maybe an academic goal. I thought I could be valedictorian. I thought I could you know, at least pass, whatever it might be, that goal that you had. And I want you to kind of explore the realization of that goal. Another thing for some of you who are like, I don't have any goals. Maybe think about when you were a child, um, there was a particular toy that you sold out for, or like you wanted to go to this particular place or be friends with a certain person, whatever it might be. And then when you attained that thing, you're like, great, I saved all of my money. I asked for money for Christmas and birthdays for two years to get this toy. And it doesn't do anything. Or it's not satisfying in the way that I thought it would be. So whatever example it might be for you, um, I want you to think about that and then talk about the repercussions of it or the aftermath. Um, and so when you do think of your story, you're going to tell that story in a project form, either digitally through maybe Google Slides or Prezi or YouTube video, or physically you might actually take pen and paper, glue stick and scissors, kind of put some things together and try um, to put together your story so that you can share it. And then all of these stories are going to be presented on Flipgrid for a portion of the grade. So it'll be kind of a presentation slash project to show that you are able to apply the themes from The Great Gatsby. And so I just did a quick one. It's really poor quality. Let's see. However, I'm calling this My Gatsby Ambition was an all-in pursuit that led to meaninglessness and disappointment. And in order to understand my Gatsby ambition, you need to know a little bit about some numbers in my life. So I was number two of four. I was number three of 872. And I was number, my ambition was to become number one of dot, dot, dot. Um, looking back on this ambition, it seems kind of ridiculous, um, but yet still fresh. So let's talk about this. I was number two of four. I had an older sister and I have two younger brothers. So two of four children. My sister was the best 
at everything. And she was only a year and a half older than me. And she was old one year ahead of me in school. Um, every time I advanced to the next class, my teachers would say, oh my goodness, you're Juliet's sister. She was amazing. She always succeeded and got, you know, perfect this and perfect that. Um, and I was like, yeah, I know, I know. That's my sister. Um, one second, please. You need to wait. No. Um, and then when she graduated from high school, she was, we both had a graduating class of somewhere close to 800. Mine was 872. Um, and Juliet was the valedictorian. She was number one. Now, here's the thing that is kind of interesting. Um, when you consider the sibling lineup, you have an older sibling and she was difficult. She was always kind of pushing the envelope, causing a little bit of tension in our family, if you will. Then I had two younger brothers that needed attention. So the person in the middle kind of becomes forgotten or lost, or you're typically compared to somebody or another. Well, in my pursuit of sort of distinction, if you will, trying to find a place for my number two self, um, I found myself at graduation one year after Juliet, and I was number three in my class of 872. And while number three would have been fine, in fact, good in some families, it was not... <laughs> Please take him out of here, Lillowin. Thank you. I will be with you in a minute. The perk of being home. Okay, so this was me, number three of 872. And as I was saying, in some families, while that might have been worthwhile, and again, my parents were so proud of me. They never put any expectations on me, but I put them on myself. That, of course, another way I did not measure up to her, another way that she makes it impossible for me to distinguish myself in sort of a worldly way. As you can see, I did get some recognition for being in the top 10, however, not number one. My goal then was how can I distinguish myself? When and where will I finally be able to say, like, I matter, I'm worth something, I'm different, better than whatever silly insecurity. So I went to graduate school, and this is just one kind of ridiculous example that I'm using for this project. But um, when I went to graduate school, I wrote my master's thesis. It's called Inscribing Reasons Becoming for Electric Singularities Through Conductive Logic and Aleatory Procedures. And I'd be happy to explain that at some point to you in person. Um, but with my master's thesis and my graduation, which here's the thing, I don't even have a picture of myself from graduation. I have, I think, um, this is generally what it looks like to graduate at Cal State Long Beach. Um, I received the departmental award and nomination for the dean's list. Um, the dean of my school said this is the most ambitious master's thesis to ever come out of our department. And okay, so I finally had my distinction. I finally graduated at the top of my class in my master's degree. I got a 4.0. And here's what I wrote a couple of weeks later. A natural propensity plus graduate training and criticism have left me completely imbalanced as a cynic, pessimist, judge, and critic of nearly everything in my life. I see people as a liability to my value and worth, goals as too hard to accomplish, myself as abandoned to doing, 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 to avoid the worthlessness and pointless act of being. With God and prayer and solitude, reflection, and at peace, the church is a cauldron of judgment, hypocrisy, insecurity, and bias. That's enough. Yuck. As you can see, some of the content from these posts comes from this filter through which I see the world. Um, it did nothing to contribute to a sense of purpose or worth or meaning in my life. Um, further, I wrote, note to self, being an academic, smart, philosophical, basically any professional humanist is not valuable for bolstering my identity to determine that I am better, more elite, or intellectually savvy in my own right or in comparison. Don't ever fall for this again. Philosophy is like Jeopardy, crossword puzzles, and Rubik's Cubes. Intense, fun, a hobby, and generally worthless. Sometimes it betters humanity, but I'm not Atlas. My weight is far more personal 
and much less massive than the fate of the world. I carry a beach ball. And so to conclude, this ambition that I set for myself to become academically distinguished, truly, um, sure, receive notoriety for a day. And I have a couple of like ribbons to show for it or like medals. But in the end, nobody understands it. Um, I spent two and a half years of my life um, invested in something that will probably not matter to almost anyone else on the planet. And I don't feel any better because of it. In fact, now I'm teaching at Riverside Christian in Yakma. And so I consider that a much higher calling and much more worthwhile than explaining to people time and time again what it means, what an aleatory procedure is, what um, conductive logic is, and how to define an electric singularity. So I'd consider this to be a pipe dream that was worthless. So that's the kind of thing that I'm hoping to see from you.